My name is Elton Georges. I am president of the PBI Diabetes Association. And during the month of November, in every year, we focus on the issue of diabetes. I have pleasure in declaring this month in the BBI Diabetes Awareness Month or Diabetes Action Month. The 14th of November every year, of course, is World Diabetes Day, so declared by the International Diabetes Federation and used to promote awareness of what's happening in diabetes. So we'd like to today uh, just start out on the world scene because it's a, we speak now of the world being a global village and what happens around the rest of the world affects us. And as we look internationally, what we see is that diabetes continues to advance in terms of the numbers of persons who are being diagnosed with the condition. The proportion of persons living with diabetes continues to increase in most countries in the world. And in 2014, the count across the world was almost 400 million persons. And that is growing by leaps and bounds. By 2035, the number of persons living with diabetes is expected to reach near 600 million if sustained effective action is not taken. Some more figures will indicate the extent of the problem. Every seven seconds, it's estimated, somewhere in the world someone dies from diabetes. There were 4.9 million deaths recorded in 2014. Another disturbing statistic from the estimates is that there may be up to 177 million persons undiagnosed worldwide. And finally, persons in ages 40 to 59 uh, constitute the largest number of persons with diabetes, with the disease. We believe that from all the indications that we have seen in the BVI, the proportion and the numbers are also growing. And we believe that we also have a large number of undiagnosed diabetics. In a 2009 survey, the Ministry of Health and Social Development who carried out the survey along with the Social Security Board and the PAHO uh, WHO team found that over 60% of the residents surveyed reported a family history of raised blood sugar. That is over 60% reported that they or a member of their families uh, had had uh, a history of raised blood sugar, which is diabetes. And in 2012, a Ministry of Health survey found that some 51% of deaths in the territory were due to chronic non-communicable diseases, which included heart disease, hypertension, or high blood pressure, cancer, and kidney disease. And we know that a significant number of the heart disease, cancer, and kidney disease conditions are complications of diabetes. Diabetes, we know, is also the leading cause of limb amputations in the Caribbean and certainly in the BVI. So we've set out these uh, figures and facts and estimates to reinforce the fact that it matters to pay attention to diabetes and to say why we are calling on the population of the territory to focus on it 
for this month especially, but of course uh, for all the rest of the year. The cost of diabetes to, the, to any country's economy is staggering. Global spending to treat diabetes and to manage complications was estimated at $620 billion in 2014. In August of this year, Diabetes UK, which is the non-governmental organization in the UK, sort of like the BVI Diabetes Association here that focuses on diabetes, wrote to the government of the British government to express their alarm and their, their worry that uh, within 20 years, the cost of diabetes with the growth in the number of cases, the cost of managing diabetes in the UK could bankrupt the National Health Service uh, there. We in the BVI are just embarking on our national insurance scheme which is our uh, universal care health scheme as the, end, the National Health Services in UK. And uh, it certainly is a concern to us also to uh, pay attention to the cost to the economy as well as to individuals of the growth in diabetes cases. We know that there are two main types of diabetes, type 1, which mainly affects, strikes young people, children, and which uh, sadly is largely not preventable. And type 2, the majority of cases in which it is estimated that 70% of type 2 cases could be prevented with proper action. Secondly, we are fairly sure of how to prevent the type 2 diseases. As someone said, there's no mystery to it. Someone said, speaking about football, American football, there's no mystery to this game. You block and you tackle. Well, there's not a great deal of mystery to how type 2 diabetes can be prevented. And we have heard it time and again, eat a healthy diet, uh, one that cuts down significantly on the intake of sugar. Sugar is the enemy. Sugars and uh, processed carbohydrates that can easily, the body easily converts into sugar. That is why the main focus of World Diabetes Day in these three years, uh, beginning last year, this year, next year, is healthy eating. And last year, uh, we specifically looked at healthy eating beginning with breakfast. The second part of the prevention uh, program, of course, uh, we also are very familiar with, it's being drummed into us, physical activity. Uh, we need to increase our physical activity and not sit down as m so much as we are doing, as we tend to do. We at the Diabetes Association welcome the government's initiatives in the past uh, few years in attacking the spread of chronic non-communicable diseases, CNDCs shortened to, which of course, of which we think diabetes in the BVI is the chief one the chief of those chronic non-communicable diseases. So we welcome the, governor's, the government's uh, moves and we enthusiastically support the measures that they have taken and that they are proposing to uh, carry out these initiatives. We are impressed with the sincerity of the Minister of Health in his pronouncements on this matter and we are impressed with the sincerity of the officers who are at the forefront of uh, leading this policy. And 
we do therefore call on all residents of the territories to get behind these initiatives, to get involved in these initiatives, and to and to uh, lobby, if, if you like, their political representatives to really support these initi initiatives, put real resources into the fight against diabetes and other, non uh, other chronic diseases. Um, unfortunately, uh, we do often see where the the programs are set out, but the execution falters, uh, as we say in maritime terminology, founders on the rocks of insufficient funds. And insufficient resources are not put in and the policies are not followed through. I'd give one example that's dear to my heart. One of the one of the objectives of these programs is to get people out and walking more and having more physical activity. In order for that to be realized, however, it is clear that our government is going to have to invest more heavily in uh, making it safe and easy for persons to walk on our highways and our streets. And uh, that uh, we have not seen a tremendous amount of, of, of resources going into that as yet. We also see a crying need for more research into uh, the diseases, the diabetes, the uh, diseases, the in research and, and, and um, most uh, up-to-date statistics on the reality of the impact of diabetes in the territory. As I said, we can only guess from what's happening worldwide to some extent and from our own observations, but we do need more uh, current and up-to-date information on uh, what is happening in that area. I'd like to spend the rest of the time, though, speaking about the BVI Diabetes Association and appealing for participation. This association was started some 35 years ago, give or take a few years, by a few dedicated ladies who started it because they cared. Because they cared about the men and women, mostly elderly, more elderly persons, middle-aged and elderly, whom they saw in the clinics, in the case of one of the persons who started the organization is in the center this morning, you're not seeing her, but Nurse Tatika Skatliff as a public health nurse. And uh, the ner two nurses were involved in the start of this organization, as well as in the early stages, Dr. Yana Downing, who was also involved clinically with people with diabetes and saw the need for a community organization outside of the government structure to assist in persons in managing their diabetes. We now continue uh, 35 years later and we have a small branch in Virgin Gorda and a small branch in the first district. What the BVI Diabetes Association does is to help support persons in managing the disease, those who have it already. That's, that's the initial 
It was the initial mission of the Diabetes Association when it started out. Uh, we assist them and we facilitate the management of the disease by those persons uh, by a no in a number of ways, but here at the center we have, for example, we carry the testing kits that they can buy at cost uh, that we supply, and we also carry out screenings and uh, other things. We carry materials to hand out to help to educate them about how to manage this, their condition. And in general, by being an association uh, where a mutual assistance association, um, you know, we, we, we um, manage to assist persons in, uh, in the management of their condition because they can use this forum to discuss with others and hear from others how they manage. So we do that. We advocate in the community for, for diabetes prevention and management. We screen uh, persons uh, at public functions, at public health fairs, at schools, at places of work. We, we uh, take part in screening activities, uh, including blood sugar testing. And over the course of the years, we have in, in those exercises identified a number of persons who uh, we could be able to send for follow-up help because they had raised blood sugar. So we do those things and we do more. But we need your help. And by your help, I'm speaking here now to the, all the residents of the Virgin Islands, of the territory. First of all, we do need persons to join the organization. Our membership in all the branches that I have called, is, the membership that's on the books is probably hardly above 70 if it reaches there. And given that there are most likely thousands of diabetics in the territory. That is a very small number. And this is an organization not only for diabetics. The persons who started the organization back in 1980 were not diabetics themselves, uh, in fact, necessarily. And uh, not all the members, the members, you don't have to be a diabetic, so we are not only appealing to the diabetics who can get most immediate help, but we're appealing to other persons to join the organization and, and continue its work of care and of education. The second way in which we need help, of course, is financial help. Uh, the association keeps this office open. Our main expenses are rent and salaries for small salaries for two persons who work to keep the, this office open and things going. Uh, but with more financial support, we are able to do more. We do get a government grant, uh, which without which we would not be able even to continue at all. But with greater financial support, we could do more. And one of the things that we would like to do is, for example, to try to get a full-time trained diabetes educator who would be able to uh, broaden the outreach in, in education, diabetes education in the territory. And so we are asking individuals, even if you don't join the organization uh, and corporations, to support the association financially. And finally, we are asking all of you to become diabetes prevention advocates and to uh, give your full support to the work of countering diabetes. And so we appeal to each person today in the words of the 
theme of the International Diabetes Federation for World Diabetes Day to act to change your life today. Secondly, to act to change the BVI, the territory, tomorrow so that we do not just continue along a path of increasing diabetes uh, cases, but take action now to slow that down and to, if possible, reverse it. Act today to change conditions in the territory for tomorrow. And to sum it up, get involved. We are asking all of you, everyone, to get involved in the diabetes awareness uh, activity. Learn about it. Take action on what you learn. Get tested and do not yourself, if you're not already, do not drift into diabetes. Thank you very much. Is there one or two questions or? A quick question, Mr. Georges, uh, Sean Rose, JTV. The, it is widely known that uh, unhealthy foods are oftentimes cheaper for people, um, and the healthier options are not so cheap. Any particular uh, area of focus there for the Diabetes Association to encourage uh, healthier choices to be more affordable? I. First of all, I, I, I do agree, it is a fact that what we call healthy eating is somewhat more expensive. The international figure for the International Diabetes Association <laughs> is that they've come up with a figure that for the average meal, it may cost up to $1.50 more U.S. to eat healthy than uh, to eat uh, unhealthy, uh, less healthy. And that is, that is because, uh, well, you know, even what we call organic food, like if you uh, we encourage people to buy local food, local vegetables and so on that have not been exposed to too many pesticides and so on. And uh, because of economies of scale and so on, local foods, to buy local foods, uh, local vegetables and so on is more expensive than the imported ones because the imported ones are grown in mass and imported in mass and, and packaged and so on and uh, so on. Uh, but to answer the, the main question you asked, uh, the Diabetes Association has not, no, uh, taken up that question of, of looking into how healthy food, healthy eating can be made less expensive, but it's certainly something that we will note for, to see, you know, if we can find out how, what is being done about it uh, in other places that could be done here. Mr. Georges, why do you think uh, at this time uh, we do not know for sure what are the statistics for diabetes? Well, the, you mean in the Virgin Islands, yes, the sir. territory. Uh, why do I think that we don't know for sure? Uh, well, I, I believe, again, it, it's a matter of, of resources put into uh, collecting the statistics and doing the studies. Uh, the, the figures that I, that I mentioned, ref referring to, relating to the BVI, as you heard, came from a study a survey done in 2009, uh, which is six years ago, and which is published on the WHO website, even. And the STEP survey it was called. And uh, then the Ministry of Health uh, referred to another uh, small survey they did in 2012, which is three years ago. Um, those are the latest figures that we've been able to find. And uh, as far as I know, it, 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 it's, uh, it's a matter of not enough resources being put into uh, deriving the figures and keeping them up to date uh, 
uh, in the BVI. And that's one of the areas we do hope that, that we will see improvement in because to try to fight the non-communicable disease epidemic, you need current information to know whether we're going backward, forward, where we are. I mean, there are about 70 or so members that you said the association currently has. Um, how responsive have those persons been towards what the association is trying to do? Well, as far as I know, the members of the association, uh, uh, and, and as usual, of the 70 or so, you'd find just a smaller handful of percentage who are active, who attend meetings regularly um, and take active part in many of the association's activities. Um, the, the members who are diabetics, we think, uh, we respond fairly well in, in managing their diabetes, especially those who, who have come out regularly to the center and uh, use the services that are here. And they are managing their diabetes uh, conditions fairly well, very well, um, you know, probably better than they would if they were not members of the association and coming out. But that's it. we're still just reaching a very small number there, and that's why we're appealing for more persons to join. Because if we had, say, 200 members, even if only 40 percent were, you know, actively pushing the activities of the organization, that would be more than we have now. Mr. Georges, are you saying as well, in addition to the need for more funding and so forth, that generally speaking there is a need for more resources to help with the fight against diabetes? Oh, there's always need for more resources. Well, when you say, when you, when you say funding, but funding, funding equates to resources in, in that with, with funding, then you can, you can uh, have by the services you need, you, if you need to pay trained staff, like in the case of the association, you know, and I, when I'm asking for corporations and for individuals to support us with funds, uh, and I mention a project which is to try to get uh, an educator on staff, I mean an educator on board who will uh, be working in the community. Uh, we first need the funds, we need the funds to do that and uh, that will pay for the resource of the educator. How, how do you envisage, I mean apart from the educator, which I reckon would be working mostly with persons who are part of the association, but how do you actually get persons interested and um, to pay attention to a proper lifestyle in order to prevent diabetes? Well, first of all, no, and uh, the educator would not be working on mainly with persons in the, in, in the association at all, not at all. The educator would be going, uh, working with persons in schools and in uh, different community groups, like church groups and so on, the educator will be going around the territory and uh, uh, spreading the word as wide and as far as possible. Um, and uh, also, you know, I speak about having a trained person. Uh, this is going to be somebody not just getting up and talking in front of groups. I mean, they, they'll be using uh, whatever the most recent techniques are to try to ensure that, uh, that people learn and their behavior changes. Um, but to your, the other, I mean, to the, the, the implication of your question is how you get persons actually to change behavior. <laughs> I, I think if we knew that, um, we would be in good stead. Uh, and um, we think that by 
telling people the story often because they forget so soon. Um, and as I said, by if, if we can demonstrate uh, by the statistics that programs are working, that it will appeal to uh, to persons. But even in other areas, like in the area of HIV, AIDS, and so on, um, it, uh, people have been finding it difficult to translate knowledge into action. People are here, and they know that something is dangerous. But um, taking the next step is where the, the problem often comes in and we have to we have to keep working on better ways to get people to do that. Shakespeare said if to do was easiest to know what to do, then chapels would be cathedrals or something. I can't remember exactly how the quotation goes, but but that the idea is that that people have the knowledge, they have the information and uh, yet we find it easier to sit down on the couch and watch TV than to get up and take a walk. And let me say that getting up and taking a walk is something that we encourage everyone to do. Um, and it's better if you do it in a group, uh, any, any exercise program might be better if you do it in a group, and especially walking and running. Uh, on the Saturday mornings as we go around, I belong to a group called the Saturday Morning Walkers, and we walk every Saturday morning for about two hours from different parts of the territory. And um, it's because we are part of the group that I think that that we keep it up regularly uh, and um, it works wonders, let's say, for individuals. Some of us, that's the most exercise we get in the week, but it's better than, than none at all. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not here canvassing for members to join the Saturday morning walkers, but, but form another group or get with another group, wherever it is, and get out and walk or run or swim, whatever appeals to you. In, on Saturday, the f November 14th, which is World Diabetes Day, we're inviting everyone to come to the festival grounds. It's a 5.30 registration for a walk for a cause. The cause is diabetes prevention. And uh, you'll be able to register support the organization by paying a few dollars to register, not many, and taking part in the walk and uh, um, then after the walk, those who like to can get involved in something called Zumba. <laughs> uh, Miss Lisa Adamson has uh, agreed to give a Zumba classes to persons who take part in the walk at the festival grounds, November 14th, World Diabetes Day. 